Financial struggles are a slow death in Football Manager, but fortunately, there are some ways that you can steal money in your transfer dealings from other clubs to save you from, uh, you know, accidentally buying Coutinho for $144 million. Not that anybody would do that in real life. Like nobody would make that mistake in real life. I'm just saying these tips are for people that struggle to pay that wage bill, that struggle to afford the players that they want when you're managing in those bigger leagues. If you're in tiny leagues, I'm still talking trials, free transfers and loans from other clubs. This stuff, unfortunately, is not going to help you very much. But the idea is that eventually you get your club to a point where you're going to be dealing with actual money being exchanged for actual players. <gasps> but now it's time to actually steal money from people. <laughs> I took a master class on evil laughing. To do that, we're actually gonna have to go to the short list on my Twitch save, which you can of course watch if you click the Twitch link down in the description. We need to find somebody who is on an actual team who would not be in my Chinese babe short list, but in my actual, uh, player shortlist. So let's say Martin Barrios is the guy that we want to buy. We need to actually start a negotiation and this is where we're going to be stealing money both going in and going out with a bunch of different clauses and how to work the the, the little locks next to the people. Uh, negotiations are not something that I spend enough time talking about and that of course is because I am very busy all of the time but uh, you would have expected that. I mean this is exactly what you would have expected me working hard non-stop. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, we're done for the day. But I'm here talking about negotiations now. So when you go to like make a transfer offer, you click these ads, there's a bunch of things that are below in both of these areas and you can add any of them and either lock it in or you can remove and exclude from negotiation before it starts. That's what we're going to be maneuvering in and let's start with transfers out. So let me go to a player and offer them out. Let's pull up my best player, Tiago News, who has exceptional hair. Anyways, we offer amount to clubs and now we are looking at a transfer offer screen. Tiago News value in the Portuguese second division where we are right now is coming to about 300,000. Now I normally say to ignore value, but if I go ahead and offer him out unspecified, then we are going to get a couple of offers. One of which is up all the way to 275,000 from Laos and Sports. So time to begin our negotiation. You're already able to get more money when you are deferring the payments. This is the first thing we need to talk about. So the deferred payments, you are going to get all of this money. This isn't even contingent on somebody being able to do something. This is over a period of time, that money will come in and get up to 300,000. Obviously, if you need the money immediately, that is a problem. But if we're talking about the long-term financial health of your club, this is an excellent way to just make your transfers more explosive. So we're gonna go through and reject all of these initial offers because you, if you accept an initial offer, I will be incredibly upset with you. Now I'm gonna throw down a zero and say, hey, if you pay us over the next year, 550,000, we go ahead and lock that in. Might as well leave the fee open because nothing else is there. And we go ahead and can you just hit continue, see if anybody is a taker at that kind of price and push it up. Hey! Your boy just made $550,000. Probably wouldn't sing about it. If I were you, I wouldn't sing about it. So, the, the, you know, we're gonna leave this at zero and say, look, over the next 12 months, right? In installments, not even any of this other stuff, but literally installments over the next seven months, will you pay us $750,000 for Tiago News? And this is the sort of money they would not pay up front. Of course, you can experiment with this. You can offer it out $750,000 up front. They probably won't take it. But based off the way it's increasing, I think we got a shot here, boys. I think we do. Might've been a little high. Let's try 700. 700,000. Lousen Sport, I know you got the money. Come to, come to Papa. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, 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 hey. We got it. We got 700,000 over the course of a year to inject into the health of the club. That's guaranteed money just over a little period of time. If you're not gonna spend the money right away, it's a preferred move and you get more money that way. And when selling, there's actually two other ways to fleece people for the amount of money. If you offer out to clubs and you do a transfer and you can say, hey, what if we gave you 700,000? Or you probably, you would wanna have this on there initially, about 675,000 but you loan him back for a year paying a wage. Will they take it? Because your biggest concern in this situation is, well, we're 
fighting for promotion. I don't want to lose this guy, but I need to guarantee the long-term financial health of the club. So you make a little adjustment to your transfer offer and you're able to get the guy back on your team for a year. Normally more effective with players that are a little younger than Tiago Noose for obvious reasons. The club is not signing them to play an immediate first team role where somebody like Tiago Noose they are signing him to uh, play an immediate first team role, which means this is going to be a harder sell. Typically, when I get a deal that I'm negotiating actively, not with the offering out with other clubs, it goes back, it goes forth, it goes back, it goes forth. They come forward with an offer that you're like, oh, I could probably take that, add a loan back in there, and they'll usually accept it. That is honestly the only time I've ever thrown it in and been successful. I've never tried to offer out with loan outs before, and apparently it's less effective than in the middle of an active negotiation. But it's something to keep in mind that you can cinch that that player for an extra year, which has a lot of value, honestly. Then there's the even more flare filled section, which is where you loan the player out with a guaranteed option to buy. Now, uh, you have a mandatory future fee, you have an optional future fee, or my favorite, future fee after matches played. So you say after they play 15 matches, then the deal has to go through. So as long as they don't get hurt, then the deal is going to go through and you just lock in on the left, whatever that you want, and you will get all of that money straight up. Those loan to buys are a good way to squeeze a little more money if you need that money immediately, or maybe you end up paying half the wage for the season because, or until they're purchased, because you loan them out for like 50% of their wage and that is able to appease the team and make things easier. But back on the transfer page, there are also the percentage of profit from next sale and the percentage of the next sale. I would always go percentage of next sale because profit is above the amount that you sold them out already for. So I, I never put a lot of value in that. But if you are in the middle of a negotiation and you can slip something like that in, or, or hopefully, you know, you wanna get it higher, but the other team will pay attention to this and it will knock down the value of the transfer if you overdo it but just something to slip in to sweeten the deal. You get a percentage of the next sale and that's just a nice welcome boost to the economics. I didn't make a huge deal about it because you never know when it's coming at all. And sometimes they get released for free, in which case <sighs> I am not big on all the after league appearance, per league appearance, international appearance stuff and the goals because there's a lot of ways to game that. You never know when somebody's getting hurt. You never know when they're gonna be played or not played. So it's stuff that I try to avoid. Look for guaranteed stuff, or at least the percentages of next sale. All right, what about buying players? How are we gonna steal money from these people? Can we pick an example where they have some sort of projected amount of money we would have to spend an estimated cost of 375,000. Uh, so if we initially begin our negotiation, they're going to ask for more than 375,000. It's not motivated by release clauses or anything. I would always look over here and check, see right here where the mouse is going nuts, right over there. You wanna make sure there's no release clauses or anything in play, cause that changes things. When there's a release clause and they really don't wanna sell the player, then you have to meet the release clause and there's nothing else that you can do. But if we're negotiating and they want 375,000, then they're initially going to ask for more than 375,000. You have to factor that in. So my initial offer to them would be like, hey, what if I give you 170,000? And then you start to use all of the things that I don't put a lot of value in. You are counting on yourself either getting promoted or being in a better financial position at this rate. Uh, you can, if there were a defender, particularly like a center back, say, well, if he scores 10 league goals, we're gonna go ahead and give you 375,000. Now they're not going to put $375,000 worth of importance into that amount, right? But if you put this on 20 goals, it is so incredibly unlikely, but you're adding value. It's like being at Manchester United, maybe this isn't a good example, but hey, they've been fine this year. I can't make fun of them as much. If you put a release clause set to zero, that just adds some value that a negotiation that's not there before, even though it is incredibly unlikely to be involved or a bonus after competition achievement. Like say, if you get promoted, like boom, if I gain promotion from the league, I will pay out a you know, 200,000 in this instance. And what you're trying to do is create value through things that you are, you, you, like you aren't going to have to pay. Uh, international, five international appearances for a dude in the Portuguese national team, we're going to lay down like $200,000 on that if it happens. And you can end up suppressing the price that you have to pay by a lot doing this. And then of course, after league appearances, you wanna throw it down to 50, which is essentially full two league seasons uh, and say, at that point, you're feeling like you'll be a little more comfortable. You throw in another 150,000. Uh, and then you go down here because especially on young players, this is gonna happen. Go to percentage of profit from next sale uh, and drop it down and click remove and exclude. This remove removes and excludes that and percentage of next sale. 
both immediately removed and excluded. You enter the negotiation. So my scouting report was outdated and they seriously value this guy. So they've bumped up the uh, the move to a million. Let's go here. After those league appearances, we're gonna go 375. After international appearances, we're gonna go 750. Minimum league goals. I mean, look, if he scores 20 league goals, we're gonna give him 1.5 million. Bonus upon promotion, we're gonna go 375. Uh, and yeah, that's it. And we can get him up front for $325,000. You just have to make sure you stay aware. If he's closing in on the league appearances thing, we are going to be due that money at some point soon. And this is only if you haven't achieved in those two years, whatever you were hoping to achieve when you laid this out. But let's go ahead and remove per league appearance and then just negotiate this and... I thought I removed and excluded it. They've thrown it back in, which this is uh, about 160,000 on top of this fee, which would make it about 425,000. Considering they asked for a million, I can't even imagine what they would have asked for if we didn't already have this stuff down here. Uh, I think we've done ourselves pretty well. We just robbed them of a ton of money and the vast majority of that money they're not gonna get. Let's find a different player to mess around and negotiate with. Maybe somebody with a bit more contemporary scouting report. Let's try Gabor Gall. This guy I've been, I was trying to sign like when I was actually playing. There's another way you can defer your payment for a player. Say you really like a guy, you want to add him to the team, but you don't want to pay the amount that you're going to have to right now. Well, we go back to the loan page and say future fee after competition achievement. I'm going to loan this guy in. Uh, and if we get promoted, I'm going to buy him and I'll buy him for 750,000. And then you just go ahead. Well, I forgot to lock it and they just locked it out. This is why I'm making the tutorial for myself. Hey, I found somebody in my shortlist that it was a feasible plan with. So if we get promoted, uh, we pay $150,000 and the guy joins the team. If we don't get promoted, we get a completely free loan out of it. So that's you know, a good way to save money and put in a situation where you only spend the money if you have the money to spend, which is basically the whole point of money. <laughs> that's like how money works. Then there's the one where you really feel like you're screwing the opposition. And that is a little something uh, called selling teams team salary contribution, which in the course of a negotiation, you can squeeze the money out of a team, uh, especially if you are signing older players with big contracts uh, that you are, say you're in the championship, you want a aging Premier League player, you throw this into a contract and they will almost always accept it and it will not affect uh, the money very much. Uh, you see it, it what, what did it go up? A few thousand? Obviously, this is a pretty low-level negotiation. But hey, I'm Oriental Dragon in the second division, all right? Relax. Relax. What a, you want an intense negotiation. Now, they're paying the fourth of his wage. Just saved myself $15,000. And I could have bumped it up a little more, probably. But I was talking at the same time. Excuses, Zealand. You're making excuses. That's a good way to squeeze people for a little more cash. Uh, and I hope that the uh, the vacuum is set to suck. Like not like I hope you don't suck in your save, but it like you, you well, I hope you do. But money, my other teams. Okay. I'll see you on stream. See you in another video.